And I wanted to ask you about something. I don't know if you could speak on it or not, but in the news, they were saying a lot of the, not a lot of, but there were certain activists in St. Louis that were, I guess it's kind of like a Cointel Pro thing all over again, where they getting followed, like you say, or harassed, or even in some still, cases assassinated, you know? That's, that still happens. Uh, last year, my studio was kicked in. You know what I'm saying? If you if you go to Google and type in uh, recording music while black and put my name, uh, there's an article about that. You know what I'm saying? About 30 plus cops came to my studio uh, looking for me because I was in, involved in a protest earlier. You know what I'm saying? And it was a, a scare tactic to, to come and harass me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a real thing, you know, ever since Ferguson. And once you go to the White House, like, like, me so uh it's a scare tactic a lot of us get fired and it's people that's doing real work you know what i'm saying it's a lot of uh, what people don't understand is this is also st louis so people get murdered all the time this is the murder capital of the nation you know what i'm saying the fbi know that this, this is one of the most dangerous cities in the world not the nation but in the world so people die here and you know the homeboy Bassam, uh palestinian guy who revolutionized the live stream and doing protests people are saying he was assassinated he wasn't assassinated there was a close friend his daddy owned the store in my neighborhood he was a drug addict you know what i'm saying right around the time that they start lacing everything with fentanyl he got a bad batch of or whatever you know he was using and he overdosed you know what i'm saying that happened with several other activists a couple other activists were murdered during the, during, due to community violence. Some had street ties, like myself, that didn't end so well on a positive note. And that caught back up with them. You know what I'm saying? And they're saying that the police did it. But that's not necessarily true. If the police want somebody, they want people that's actually changing shit. The system wants the people that are actually connecting dots internationally around struggle, you know, organizing people that can move people nationally, move people that can change laws like they want people with power, not somebody that's just, you know, got a nice following on Instagram or Facebook and they talking and people be listening. They want real people who organize. And so I don't, I don't think we have yet to see a real assassination uh, out of people in Ferguson, but it's definitely been attempts. Uh, our office has been shot up. Uh, we've had random shootings. You know, a couple of our comrades' houses have been broken in. Uh, my car has been shot before randomly you know what i'm saying by somebody you can tell was trained uh so it's it's things that happen and i mean what we come from you know we come from the streets so we always in the defensive mind state anyway so this is just a, a, a normal day in st louis okay okay man that's that's deep bro let me see my next question is uh maybe you could speak to this it's, it's a it's a question that a lot of us have as black Americans is like, what what is the solution to this problem? Do we stay in, say, a, a city like St. Louis or Detroit or Cleveland or wherever we at? Do we stay in the ghetto and build it up? Do we fight gentrification? Do we hold on and buy the block up or do we separate? Do we go buy land and create a black Wall Street and grow our own food and milk our own cows and have our own bakery? Or like you say, on the international perspective, is it better for us to just leave and start completely over? You know, what, I, what is your perspective on that long term? I think it's a combination of a lot of different things. Uh, for us to just pack up and leave is not possible. Uh, you got to look at most of the people in our position. You know what I'm saying? Most most black people are below the poverty line. Most most black people can't afford to take a family vacation at the end of the you know? I got so many homies that's never been outside the city ever. You know what I'm saying? That's 20, 30. You know, that's never been outside the city. So to say, uh, we just going to pack up and leave. Yeah, if all the black billionaires and millionaires want to fund it, shit, come on, let's do it. It's, they got enough money. If they put it together, we can go buy some land and build some city somewhere and be all right. You know what I'm saying? But do people really want to give up their comfort like that? Do people really want to wake up one day and not be able to just grab their phone and get on Facebook or Instagram? They really not want to be able to hop in the car and drive to a mall or go to Foot Locker and get the new J's? Do they really not want to be able to go see uh, motherfucking Bootsy when he come to the motherfucking club next weekend? You know what I'm saying? Like, are these things that people really want to sacrifice? And I had to ask myself that also, you know what I'm saying? For freedom and for my kids, hell yeah, I'm willing to do that. But a lot of niggas don't want freedom. A lot of niggas want fame. 
A lot of niggas don't want freedom. A lot of niggas want attention. A lot of niggas don't want freedom. A lot of niggas want comfort and convenience. A lot of niggas just want freedom to come and go as they please. They don't truly want freedom and liberation because they don't understand the uncomfortness or the discomfort that you're going to experience on the road to that. So in order for us to basically build true equity, it's a combination of things that we got to do. First, we have to stop being so separated amongst each other that one of the main problems that we have as black people is that we control none of our own wealth that black dollar stays in the black community an average of four to six hours before it goes elsewhere you know how long the white dollar stay in the white community it never leaves you know how long the arab dollar stay in the arab community it never leaves same thing with chinese jewish so on and so forth we don't control none of our money. It go right elsewhere. The second thing, gentrification is a huge enemy. But again, we don't own shit. But also, even if we do own shit, we fucking up the property value so much in the communities that we live in. It's a certain thing called eminent domain that most black people don't even know what that means. Eminent domain means basically if the government is working with a company or a company is interested in a certain land, they can go to the government and convince certain politicians to say, hey, uh, these people don't want to sell their houses. The government can come in and take it over, can just say, you know what, we're going to take this land from you and just give you exactly. the money think it's worth and then they can take that land do government shit with it or they can sell it to the corporation that's also one of the most important things about voting local see everybody be pushing voting for president 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 yes and all voting is is a piece on the chessboard it's not the end all be all but it's definitely a piece on the chessboard and what we need to do at the bottom line is to be able to control our neighborhoods and control our cities control the politicians that we put in office because then you can stop shit like eminent domain you can stop shit like certain bills you can make sure that certain money is coming into the city and it's going into your community parks or building a community center to raise the value you buy a house and your property value is increasing so all of that is a part of it you know what i'm saying the school boards making sure that the money is being used what it needs to be used for. For example, it's a school district here that's supposed to be a decent schools district by the name of Hazelwood. It's in the county, which is, should be a good neighborhood in St. Louis. Uh, the school board is absolutely terrible. They funneling money. They basically then turned it into a slush fund. You feel me? Like these things have to stop happening. Like, and all of this, all of this is, is on the chessboard. All of it. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop treating these little niggas like, like they, just idiots and worthless and just criminals like these little kids have been called monsters from the time that they've been in elementary school i know i was one of them i was one before i even got on the plane for the first time in my life i had already gone through tsa every day at school ain't no black school students happening black schools don't get shot up i also went to a white school where the, the schools get shot up not one metal detector in sight never seen a drug dog come through you know what I'm saying? So all of this is being implanted into black kids' minds from a, a, as small as, as preschool. And you wonder why they grow up and flip the fuck out because you've called them a monster from start to finish. Didn't give a fuck about them. Told them they would never be nothing. Refused to learn their learning style to make sure that they can retain this information properly. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different factors that we as a people have to look at. And the elders failed us a lot. That generations before us completely failed us. They want to blame us and the generations under us. Say we young, we dumb, we don't want nothing. All we want to do is kill and all this shit. Y'all fucked us up. Y'all the reason we like this. Crack, heroin. You know what I'm saying? Stop fighting after Martin Luther King got assassinated. Thought we won some shit during the civil rights attorney because some white people signed some bitches. We ain't winning shit. They were still killing niggas. They were still oppressing people. They were still putting crack intentionally into the neighborhood to fund international conflicts. We didn't win shit. You niggas gave up. You got comfortable with little jobs in the county. You was able to buy you a little house, follow the white folks where they moved there with their white flight. And you thought you won something because you got a $20, $20 an hour paying job and you can afford to accumulate debt. You think you won something. You think you better than us. No, we all still fucked up. And until we realize that shit and come together and get on one accord and stop judging each other, it's going to stay fucked up. Man, you hit it on the head, King. I appreciate you even going into detail like that. You know, we need to have these conversations most definitely. Um, 